Hello everyone and welcome back to The Aspect. It's time for episode number three and today I'm joined by Tommy Oronen, the CEO and co-founder of Polar Night Energy. The company designs and builds energy storages for renewable energy. It's very cool. Tommy holds a Master's of Science in power plant technologies. He rides his bike literally everywhere and he enjoys a spot of ice swimming as you'll discover. As always, I hope you enjoy. Hello and welcome back to The Aspect. Today I'm here with Tommy. Hi Tommy, thank you so much for joining me. How are you today? Hi, thanks a lot. Uh, I'm feeling excellent. I was just uh, having a quick uh, walk after a lunch uh, in a Finnish forest. Oh, lovely. And you are based in Finland, am I correct? Yeah, in Finland. <laughs> and in what... <laughs> what's the weather like there at the moment? So it's like it won't get any better than this uh, at the winter time because we have like I think uh, minus four degrees Celsius and calm and all, all the trees are having this like a crispy frost. <laughs> and, yeah, <laughs> that sounds that sounds uh, awful. We, we, winter wonderland. So in terms of this episode, I've been really really interested about um, speaking to you for a long time because. Yeah, uh, you are one of the co-founders of the sand battery, as the term has That's been correct. coined. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit about this? Because when I first heard about the sand battery, I thought it, it's just a battery made of sand. <laughs> and that sounds really stupid, yeah. but I feel like yeah. some listeners might be thinking the same yeah. thing. So will you yeah. uh, dumb it down for me and tell me a bit yeah. about the invention? <laughs> So the origins are that uh, me and Mark Willen and we are the uh, two co-founders. Uh, we have met at the uh, Technical University of uh, Tampere and uh, we studied uh, power plant technologies. Wh- while we were studying there, we wanted to uh, like really focus on the like <laughs> good technologies mm-hmm. for the for the environment uh, and not for the old uh, uh, b- burning. Uh, power plants. Yeah, we we started uh, thinking about uh, energy storages, and uh, we we started with a uh, water based, like a normal uh, giant uh, w- water tank, because okay. th- th- we knew that we have in uh, district heating networks. So my question was to Marco that uh, could we utilize that huge water tank and just uh, uh, use it much much more slowly to give heat for like building complexes so that they, they could be uh, energy self-sufficient uh, with so- solar uh, heat. Yeah. And uh, I made my master thesis about that. And after, after that, we realized that we actually should go for uh, clean electricity rather than like so- solar heat. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, with electricity, you can go as high temperatures uh, as you like. And uh, then I started thinking, like, what uh, would be the cheapest, most uh, readily available material mm-hmm. uh, for the storage? And uh, it, it cannot be flammable, uh, something <laughs> like <laughs> uh, right through the earth. Our first idea was let's uh, heat sand. That's so cool. And so, yeah. how high a temperature can sand be heated to? Yeah, it melts in, I think, 1,900 degrees Celsius. So wow. pretty high. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is high. How long can it be heated for? Is it quite a intense process to keep the sand heated for a long period of time? It, it uh, depends on the uh, size and shape of the, okay. of the st- storage. So I, s- some of our customers are uh, interested about those, but th- then they don't really understand the economics <laughs> as, as we didn't <laughs> when we were students because uh, obviously, you would have then one one cycle uh, in a year, yeah, the yearly cycle, mm-hmm. and so in the lifetime of storage, you would have thirty to fifty cycles, yeah, okay. rather than uh, if you if you would be using that like every day or uh, w- once in a week uh, cycle, then you would would have fifty times thirty thirty yeah. cycles. So the economics of the storage will go uh, much much better. Yeah. And how expensive is a sand battery to maintain? Is it quite expensive at the moment on a commercial scale? We have now uh, like commercialized two megawatt uh, unit product. Uh, two, so two megawatt is the power for charging and discharging and the 
energy in one cycle is uh, 200 megawatt hours. Wow. So so 100 hours on, on a full power. That costs uh, around uh, 2 million euros. Wow. <laughs> and uh, comparing that to similar uh, water-based uh, heat storage, that would be a similar price tag. Water-based could be even a little bit uh, cheaper than that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, we gain here the power power uh, heat output. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so the uh, temperature of the heat is uh, greater. So, let's say uh, we have now like a few conversations with uh, breweries. Uh, right. they, they are make, making beer, so uh, they are they need, I think, 160 degrees liquid water. Okay. So that you obviously wouldn't be able to do with uh, water-based storage mm-hmm. because you you would have to like pressurize the huge volume and that's extremely costly yeah i can imagine am i right yeah. in saying that the first um commercial sound battery is actually being used in western finland right now it's it's powering yeah, a right. town is yeah. that right yeah uh, it's giving the heat to uh town of kangamba and Actually, just last Friday, there was this ceremony. One of the ministers uh, of Finland were there. Oh, wow. How does that feel to have gone from sort of an idea as a student to now to now having it working in real life? Yeah, that's that's amazing. And uh, like all all the uh, media attention. (laughs) <laughs> I can imagine. It's crazy to think <laughs> about. Like we, we are just two normal guys. <laughs> <laughs> now, now they say that potentially 3.4 billion people have seen sand battery. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, it reached <laughs> yeah. it reached us over here, and it, it yeah. was it was so interesting to hear about it. And I think it's a real advancement at the t- at a time when the climate technology industry is growing. To have yeah, yeah. done something that has already made its mark in that industry is just yeah. amazing. Uh, I want to ask you then on the topic of sustainability: What does the concept mean to you, and has it changed since you've founded Polar Night Energy? Yeah, it, it has changed uh, a little little bit we were only thinking about uh, heating uh, when we started but now we are adding to, from heat back to electricity mm-hmm. uh, with the turbine so that's an addition and uh, what it me- means to me so uh, me-, me and Marco this is like half of our lives <laughs> <laughs> because it, we, we have been doing this for uh, 10 years now yeah and I'm wow. only th- 33 so <laughs> Uh, that's that's amazing. Quite a, a big chunk of my whole life. <laughs> yeah. And when you were a kid, so when yeah. 20 years ago, did you yeah. know what sustainability meant? Was it spoken about much? Not, not so much. So this has really been a journey over the last 10 years, as you said, since you've been working on this. Yeah. Do you think that education for kids, specifically in Finland now, has opened the conversation around sustainability anymore or do you think there still needs to be a lot of work done yeah uh, i think there there should be a lot of work done especially about food like food education was the right word i think they are now focusing on like energy savings and so on but uh, actually like uh, food production is the the biggest uh, thing to be uh, concerned so tommy if you're really only getting into sustainability over the last 10 years or sort of in your 20s to your 30s as yep. a as a member of the youth as a kid how important do you think youth engagement can be for sustainable future futures yeah like super important uh, i think the biggest concern uh, of, of mine becomes when i uh what's like our politics uh, in finland mm-hmm. uh which is now getting better but like I- extremely good in finland but they are mostly like uh, 50 to 60 and plus uh men mm-hmm. what are their uh thinking processes about the state uh, yeah. <laughs> of the world when when they are like <laughs> on the end already <laughs> you know just I mean. a very polite way of saying that they might be a bit outdated <laughs> that's yeah. okay that's okay we can say that on here yeah. um yeah and i think it's 
it must be quite disengaging to young people to see yeah. that many people yeah. running the show who were of an older generation. Yeah. That's where engaging the youth in these kind of conversations is really important. I mean, in yeah. Finland, have you guys sort of gone round any schools to explain this or did, was there a lot of media attention yeah. that kids were yeah. paying attention to? Yeah, we have done some uh, uh, speaks uh, with, with our schools and uh, like Marco was just last week giving giving a speech to his friend is uh teaching in some uh school so he mark was talking oh, cool. there. yeah and I, i have been also talking with my teachers from uh, oh. my, my school so uh, we would be probably going to speak there also how does it feel to be going back trying to teach trying to teach kids about this when yeah. when you were a kid that didn't exist at all yeah Yeah, it uh, feels extremely good uh, if I can give <laughs> something to them because, like, uh, my story would be that there were times that I wouldn't, I wasn't so good at school. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I was failing at a point uh, in in high school uh, math classes. Oh, <laughs> I, I think, think we all like were at one point. Four, four in a row, and then I decided that uh, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna fix this, and <laughs> I went. Uh, Like one one year back uh, there, I started to like really excel there. Yeah. And th then I saw like how how good that feels when I like prepare to exams and uh, get and really actually do well results. Yeah. yeah. And it, it uh, uh, started to feel good. And uh, like obviously after that, I had a chance to go to uh, university or uh -huh. to the technical university of Tampere and probably like that wouldn't have happened and we, we wouldn't have this company if, if I yeah. <laughs> like one one night if I didn't decide that uh, like I, I'm gonna go back and fix yeah. those. <laughs> do you have to do much maths now in the company <laughs> yeah or do you have someone know. to do that for you <laughs> yeah uh, now, now we have my old friend of mine Villa Kivioja working and he's a doctor from mathematics okay and, so you've got uh, that covered yeah. now <laughs> Yeah, and Villa will be joined by uh, Terhi uh, very soon, and she, she's also a doctor of mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. At least the uh, that burden is off of your shoulders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have been like uh, the one who did like all the uh, computation uh, for for the sand battery for yeah. the like, last 10 years. Uh, I use a software called uh, Comsol Multiphysics, and that's like a, a software to calculate finite element method. Wow. So that because these are like fairly complex things to sure. calculate beforehand because of the transient and uh, heat transfer and time dependent problems. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have to use that kind of applications to solve those. Uh, I I'm extremely happy that uh, we had. But uh, the Comsol Multiphysics at the university because <laughs> then then I had time to learn, to le learn how to yeah. use it. And then when we found the company, I, I called them then and uh, bought a license for us. Oh, um, that's so cool. So it's sort yeah. of a full circle moment, if you will. Yeah. And when you founded the company, I've always been interested. How come you called it Polar Night Energy? Is there a reason behind that? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Actually, there is because uh, if you go to our website and see the like the great picture uh, at the background there, it's uh, really pretty. I was I was yeah, looking at it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Mikko Lagerstedt has uh, taken that picture, and Mikko is uh, uh, a husband of my sister. Aww. So uh, actually, I was thinking Mikko's pictures first, and then I thought that uh, what name would fit. That's so like, cool. Yeah, and also it had to fit the idea that yeah. we would be giving the heat uh, in the middle of the winter. Yeah. Yeah, obviously polar night uh, means in, in Finland and uh, like no Nordic countries uh, yeah. to think that uh, sun doesn't rise at all. Yeah. <laughs> when you are far enough in the north that's ve that's very cool that's a very sweet story um <laughs> and off the back of that obviously you're the ceo 
of, uh, yeah. of Polar Night Energy. Is there anything you've learned that you can share with us as being a CEO, uh, any of the biggest challenges or any advice to younger CEOs? Probably you don't understand how much you will learn. <laughs> 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 and also, like, I, I didn't understand. Uh, we were focusing now about, like, saving the world. by <laughs> 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 the company, but... Uh, I, I didn't understand like how good it actually feels to provide a place to work yeah. uh, for, for someone. And uh, like basically almost all of our people at the company are friends of ours. So it even feels uh, e- even better yeah. uh, to give a place to work uh, for someone. And that's contributing to sustainable futures in another way. It's not just yeah, yeah. the it's not just the concept of polar night energy, but it's the fact yeah. that yeah, you founded a company and you're giving people jobs and you're trying to do yeah. something better for for the yeah. world. So I yeah. think that's really cool. No, thank you for sharing that. And we'll move on to the uh, rapid fire question round, which is our mm. fun little break for listeners. Okay, my first question to you, Tommy: Would you prefer to go forward in time or go back in time? Probably back. <laughs> okay. Are you an optimist or or a realist? I would say optimist. Okay, good. Are you an explorer or do you prefer to stay home? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, explorer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you rather be in your dream location or your dream job? Dream location. Okay, and what is your dream location? I don't know yet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it, it's coming. It's coming. Like a separate island somewhere <laughs> <laughs> that's powered by renewable energy and sand batteries that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> okay good um pets or no pets uh no pets <laughs> are you more of a thinker or a doer probably doer <laughs> okay uh, i think i know the answer to this next one but rain yeah. or snow snow <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. are you a minimalist or a maximalist minimalist okay uh, are you more cautious or are you a risk taker? Yeah, obviously a risk taker. <laughs> <laughs> if you could be any animal, what would you be and why? Probably a seal. <laughs> oh, why? On, on my free time, I like to uh, free dive. And I, I've oh. also done some uh, free diving under ice and uh, crazy under stuff. Under ice? Like that. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's very cool. Is that is that quite common in in the more Nordic countries? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I was... Probably like more more common. Yes, more common here because you have the chance to do yeah. it. Yeah, but still, like no uh, sane person does it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but I haven't heard of, of of that too much. Wow, that that's impressive. Um, what advice would you give to your younger self? Everything will go. Pretty well. <laughs> Pretty well. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's good. What's your favorite color? Red. <laughs> okay. And I like to ask uh, all of my guests this because there is a correct answer. Which yeah. color do you prefer out of green or blue? Probably blue. Okay, wrong answer, but that's okay. <laughs> it's green. <laughs> the answer is green, but that's okay. Don't worry. Um, so that brings our rapid fire question round to an end. Thank you so much, Tommy. Yeah. I feel like I've yeah. learned a bit more about you and I hope our listeners have as well. And we'll have to uh, talk about free diving a bit more, maybe at the end, because, uh, yeah. well, in fact, now I want to know, when did you start free diving? Uh, I, I think uh, I have done it uh, more, more than 17 years. Wow. Or, or almost like even more than 20 years, probably. Yeah. That's but amazing. like o- only, only now I have like proper equipment for it right. because uh, I, I did it only like with uh, glasses and snorkel and mm-hmm. swim suit. But uh, no, now I have a proper uh, wet suit for it. Wow. Okay. And is there a certain time in the day that you have to go or can a certain temperature? Are there a lot of variables that you have to take into account? Yeah. Yeah. Like the suite is so good. I I can't even imagine or or describe how how good it is because uh, it's tailor-made. So there has been like 20 measures uh, throughout my body to make it fit. And uh, you you can only put it on with soap water. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's awful yeah. you have to put it on when it's wet yeah yeah oh, oh it, it doesn't feel that bad it, it feels uh, extremely good it fits so well because uh, so that uh, you you won't have any like uh, flowing water 
eat right. inside. Okay. Yeah. And how long can you free dive for at, at one given time? Is it like diving where there's a certain amount of time before you come back up? Uh, yeah, I, I prefer to do only like short uh, uh, times because mo most of the time I'm by myself. Which right, is... okay. Which is not good. <laughs> <laughs> not recommended. Yeah, I think I, I have been. I haven't been uh, more than three minutes wow. under the water. Even that time is uh, quite good. And uh, when when I'm training, like I do the uh, warm up thirty to forty minutes, and wow. then that's the best thing about it. When when you feel like how your body stabilizes there, and uh, you can really easily like be more and more time under the water okay wow yeah. and do you find that it's had you know a lot of benefits for you yeah i think uh like the calm uh mindset that it gives you because uh, ultimately free diving is about uh like relaxation because yeah. uh you have to be that uh, state of mind uh when you are diving that you are not consuming like your precious yeah <laughs> you can't be panicking yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's not an option. I guess the closest thing we have to free diving here is a cold shower. So yeah. I, I'm going to yeah. recommend that to listeners. If you're not yeah. in Finland and can't access free diving, then try a cold yeah. shower. That might be. Yeah. Although we have Lake Geneva, which gets really cold. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Uh, in December yeah. every year, we have the Coupe de Noël. <laughs> And uh, this is where people can sign up to jump into the lake. They're usually in costume, yeah. wearing yeah. God knows what, and they jump in <laughs> and they swim 100 meters, um, yeah. and then they get out. And it's freezing. Yeah. Uh, some of my friends did it uh, in December, just gone. They were dressed in Hawaiian shirts as yeah. they jumped. It was just insane. But yeah. I guess maybe that's kind of yeah. similar, <laughs> but a yeah. different premise. Like, like the craziest guy in Finland, uh, I think uh, Christian Magius Silla, who is like uh, like a proper free diver uh, uh, in, in a sport. Yeah, I, I'm like a hobbyist only. Uh, so he he just did uh, like few years back. He dived uh, horizontal uh, 100 meters below the ice. Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my goodness! Like proper crazy guy. That's insane. Oh, that actually feels yeah. like my worst nightmare. Wow. <laughs> well, best of luck with that hobby. I hope, yeah. <laughs> I hope it, it bring, keeps bringing you all the benefits. I will yeah. never try it. I don't think yeah. I'm not that brave. But no, thank you for sharing that. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, we'll move on to the last few questions that I like to ask uh, my, my guests, Tommy. And uh, yeah. the next one is, obviously, Polar Night Energy is all to do with sustainable and renewable energy. Uh, I want to know a bit more about the future plans for Polar Night Energy. So where are you thinking of taking the company? How are you thinking of scaling it up uh, in order to progress towards sustainable futures? Yeah, so uh, like uh, basically straight from our strategy uh, so that uh, our goal is to have uh, three uh, working power plants uh, in the end of uh, 23. Wow. And in Finland and then uh, in 24 and onwards we will try to spread uh, to help companies and people around the world probably starting from uh, Sweden and uh, Northern Europe mm -hmm. I, I forgot to say the first and least that uh, we, we want to be that like a dream job for the pe people who are uh, working with us oh uh, that's so cool and, and also one thing that uh, we, we are now uh, producing the heat only uh, uh, storages or heat only uh, units mm -hmm. but we are now uh, making it so so that we can also uh, output uh, electricity uh, from the storage okay cool. so, so we will be adding a turbine unit there and then produce uh, heat and electricity at the same time that sounds and, like so much potential. Yeah, and uh, that's very easily done in uh, countries like uh, Sweden, uh, Finland, uh, Denmark, Poland, because we have uh, district heating networks. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have a efficiency with the turbine, something like uh, 25 to 35 percent, 
uh, it's not like a deal breaker here because you can dump that excess uh, heat uh, after the turbine condenser to a different heating network and that's okay. what we are already doing yeah uh, with, with all of the conventional uh, power plants uh, so we are not like wa- wasting that energy to the ocean or uh, to the air yeah uh, and, uh, one one potential is also if we are not uh, heating district heating network with the excess heat we can do cooling so we we would launch a tri generation unit so that we would be producing uh, cooling electricity and heat from the same unit Wow. It sounds like 2023 is going to be a very busy year, <laughs> at least, yeah. um, and then moving yeah. forwards. And yeah. if I may ask, does that also mean you'll be scaling up the team and you'll be growing a bit? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. we will try to raise uh, around uh, 5 to 10 million euros uh, this year. Wow. So so that we, we can hire about uh, 30 people more yeah I, best it, of luck it won't, it won't happen in a year but if if i had the money i'd, I'd give it to you <laughs> I, <laughs> that, thanks I, a lot. I hope you know that i, I have nothing yeah. but yeah. if i did i would yeah. and so what are some of the challenges that you might be facing in the near future as you scale things up the one, one thing that frustrates me uh, the most is the like uh, slow slowness of the uh, of these projects. Like yeah. one deal that we are hopefully uh, closing now has been ongoing for two years, and uh, there have been uh, deals for uh, four and three years. So wow. th- these are so like so long processes, and uh, e- even the build uh, of the system will take. Uh, something like nine months probably we will get that faster in, in the future if if we would have uh, some components uh, in in a store that would help a lot because uh, like af- after corona and after ukrainian war mm-hmm. uh, there has been lots of uh, problems to get uh, cer- certain parts and like yeah. delivery times are something like 40 weeks if you order wow, something that's yeah. insane so it's a lot of patience yeah. in the process i guess yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, when i was doing uh, some homework and i was i was reading about um about the sound battery be- before i uh, before i talked yeah. to you because i thought i can't sound totally dumb and not understand anything yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, i was reading about how uh, it's going to be a real benefit to Finland and hopefully in the future other countries, um, whether yeah. they're Nordic countries or, or Northern European countries, because of uh, Russian supplies being uh, reduced or, um, you know, a- a- across Europe. Having a renewable alternative like yours uh, is, I think, the start of a journey, hopefully, where countries in Europe become a little bit more independent on other countries in Europe <laughs> yeah, and yeah, yeah. Um, and they start to shift towards this green technology, which we really need to see. How does it feel to be a part of uh, of that movement at very much the forefront? Yeah, it feels extremely good, like give, giving the power to, to those people who, who will have the asset to, to do it uh, rather than being mani- manipulated uh, by the people who would have the uh, fossil energy. Yeah like it has been so that even this uh, case that we have now on the table uh, here in Finland they have been so dependent on Russian gas mm-hmm. like uh, almost all of their uh, heating energy in the district heating network comes, comes from gas wow so that that has been a real problem to them uh, like uh, last year obviously and they, they have been <laughs> probably uh, people scared that they, their homes will be like actually frozen yeah, because uh, gas is like especially bad because you don't have like any big reserves. W- what would you uh, like have with uh, like nu- nuclear fuel or, or with uh, oil? Mm-hmm. No, I'm sure that, uh, you know, I mean, last year was, I think, scary for for a number of reasons, but it, it's just yeah. so great that I'm sure you hear this from loads of people, but, you know, you guys should be so proud of having uh, created something like this that's now actually working. It's not just an idea. Yeah. I think it's so cool that it's actually being used commercially. Are there plans to use this, uh, you know, in housing uh, on a more localized level? Mm-hmm. Can we see that in the future? Uh, yeah, we are, we are trying to do that. And uh, obviously, like my my opinion is to uh, I, I would like to help more the 
uh, single people like uh, so that they could all also buy a system from us mm-hmm. we haven't had uh, resources to do the like a single house yeah. uh, system yet but uh, that that would be possible uh, yeah. in the future no it's good to have uh, that as a part of yeah. a long-term strategy i guess one of the things that i've been uh, thinking about like last uh, few weeks is that uh, if we could have a when you have a normal wood stove mm-hmm. uh, which has some some mass in it so uh, bricks so they are heat, heating bricks with uh, burning wood yeah. so if, if we could have like a, a similar like this uh, cylindrical uh, storage inside of a house that would be only like electrically heated yeah. uh, when you have surplus uh, electricity uh, that, that sounds so cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that that would be very easy uh, to do. Yeah, because uh, like our, our normal systems, they are <laughs> e- easy to build, but uh, uh, this this would be only like sand and uh, electrical heaters. Yeah. No, I think <laughs> uncovering the potential of sand, like you guys have, is just awesome because it's yeah. not something. I was reading an article that said uh, you guys are trying to use materials that are not needed in commercial settings so that way you're not taking away uh what people need but you're actually utilizing what's left over uh, and what isn't being used and i just think that it's the coolest it's it sounds so simple to have actually been able to do it and then implement it successfully is is a whole other story yeah we we have now uh, one case at the southern finland they have a mining pit there and we would have a possibility to use like a uh, local uh, waste material from there. Oh, it's so good to hear. There's so much potential. And moving on to my last question then that uh, I like to ask guests, how yeah. is Polar Night Energy or you yourself, you can answer for it from either perspective, yeah. how are you harnessing the power of the youth? Are you looking to hire more young people? Are you looking to talk to more people in schools and university? H- how are you yeah, engaging the youth moving forward? Yeah. Yeah, so all of us uh, in our, our team, we are like fairly young. Yeah. I think M- Mika is uh, uh, oldest, and he, <laughs> he ironic talking. being in the in the communications yeah. position. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, o- o- only place that we w- would have like on the on the operation team a uh, li- little bit more of experience would be like uh in in the sales because uh yeah. we, we have realized that in in that position you could uh, benefit because uh, all of our customers they are like sim- similar age so oh, that's, you're being very polite but <laughs> i know what you mean and i think and i think one thing i always try to express on this podcast is that Mm. those of older generations have so much knowledge and experience we still need yeah. that it's not that yeah. we're uh it's not that we're dissing the older generations mm. yeah, on this yeah. podcast they're mm. still yeah. so useful but it's just about them harnessing the power of younger people like yourselves yeah. uh and those even younger you know in schools mm. and uh one thing that i've spoken about with guests before <clears throat> is the importance of sustainable education for example yeah. so yeah, yeah. you know it, it takes an hour it to organize a call like this but in a school and suddenly kids understand what a sand battery is and they think oh that's actually really cool and that could change their whole outlook on on where they want to go um (laughs) but no that's really cool to hear that you guys are trying to to keep the team young as well uh, whilst drawing on that experience from older generations like like my personal view is that we we still have the energy yeah Uh, (laughs) Well, of course, of course, like some some older people uh, have it too, but uh, there there are only like few percent of those. But m- my plan is to retire uh, maximum when I'm forty. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice, wouldn't it? That's the dream. Yeah. You know, I've had another guest say the same thing that it's yeah. the young people who have the most energy. In fact, I think this yeah. guest I'm talking about is of the older generation, and he yeah, yeah. himself said you guys have the energy don't you know don't be dull um (laughs) and and really really make an effort and it's true whilst we have we feel like we have this burden on our shoulders or some of us do not all of us 
at the same time we have the uh the motivations and the drive to try and change things which is exactly yeah. what you guys are doing so on behalf of everyone our age thank you yeah. <laughs> for setting a precedent <laughs> and moving on to uh, my last couple of points now tommy i always like to ask my guests for a media recommendation that relates to sustainability or the youth and this can be a podcast a book a tv series whatever so what is something that you'd like to share with the listeners uh, i actually don't remember at the at the moment uh, really good book here oh damn <laughs> it's it's about human uh history uh it's, is it the yes. history of humankind yeah i think so yeah we, we have to google it now <laughs> yeah i hope we're talking about the same one it's really yeah, yeah. thick it's really thick yeah, yeah. live research going on here <laughs> yeah yeah it's this one that's a very good recommendation and we'll make sure that uh we link it uh down below in the podcast description so that anyone who wants to check it out can uh, yeah. can see it there yeah. <laughs> what's one of the main takeaways from that book i i only had like uh like o overall opinion in, in my mind background that was uh, extremely good book. yeah i've heard very good things about it um yeah. and as i said my sister's currently reading it yeah. uh, slowly i think but yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's big uh, and yeah. finally tommy uh, i want to ask you what is your call to action for the listeners because we like to leave things here with something for them to take away, just in case we've lost them <laughs> along the way. Yeah. Um, so what's one thing you'd like to leave listeners with? If you are wondering that you would like to do something and you are a little bit afraid of doing it, just just do it because <laughs> you you most certainly can do it. <laughs> so have, have the confidence to yeah. take that next step forward. Like the first step is the most critical one then yeah everything will, will go well after that or pretty well as you said earlier yeah, yeah pretty well <laughs> because I, I have i have cycled uh, from uh, finland to london and on, on a bicycle <laughs> and uh, i think like the hardest step is to like step out of your <laughs> own oh, door my goodness how start, is this only coming doing... up now <laughs> <laughs> how long did that take you uh, one one month <gasps> and like I, I really like fell love on like bicycle touring uh, at that time, and now now I have plans that uh, w when I'm able, I I will uh, cycle around the world. Wow! Oh my goodness, <laughs> you're that, just that's like ho whole another level because uh, that's that was only one month from Finland to yeah. London. That will be around uh, two years around. Wow. The world. That's insane. And which countries <laughs> did you go through? From Finland, from Tampere to Turku, and then uh, Perry to Sweden, Stockholm, then through Sweden. Sweden was actually quite uh, a long part because it was uh, <laughs> 10, 10 days, <gasps> almost 1,000 kilometers in Sweden. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then uh, Denmark from Helsingborg to uh, Copenhagen, then yeah. Germany there to... Uh, Netherlands, Belgium, the uh, western uh, coast. Wow. And then to France and then from uh, Dover to England. Wow. That is, that's inspiring. Maybe that's inspired someone to start cycling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope so. And it, it's only like to take it uh, in small steps. Like yeah. uh, if you don't have anything else to do than cycle in a yeah. day, then 60 kilometers is no, no big deal. It goes quite quickly. Yeah, <laughs> but like now when I'm working at the same time, if I cycle uh, 200 kilometers in a week, that's like uh, extremely tough week then. Like yeah. my normal is uh, something like uh, plus 100. Oh my goodness. Wow, that makes me feel re <laughs> really <laughs> unfit. <laughs> Yeah, but, well, but I, I don't. I don't own own a car, and I uh, don't want to own a car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was really inspiring. Thank you for bringing that up at the end. Um, yeah, it's just another insight into your life behind Polar Night Energy, which is really yeah, cool. Nice. Um, and you're firing firing on all cylinders when it comes to renewable energy. So that's good <laughs> yeah, to know. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you, Tommy, so much for for coming on the aspect today. I really appreciate you taking out the time to speak uh, to speak to me about Polar Night Energy, the sand batch and your love for free diving and cycling. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, no, no. Thank, thanks to you for uh, when you asked uh, to join you. No, thank you so much. It's been a really cool conversation, and I wish you guys all the best of luck with the uh, Polar Night Energy uh, over the course of the rest of the year and then in the years yeah. to come. I think there are going to be big things uh, for yeah. sand batteries. Thanks. I'm crossing my fingers for you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Hi everyone, thank you for listening and watching this episode of the Aspect Podcast. Please like, follow and subscribe on your favourite listening app, you would make me very happy. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok and YouTube and all the socials will be on the website which is coming soon. Take care of yourselves and I'll be back soon.